Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to another edition of Tool Tech Tuesday. I know it has been a while since I've done a tool video, but I thought I would take advantage tonight of not having any transmission parts to work on the valve body or not doing any work on the truck and show you guys what tools that I have used to do this transmission build. I was really, really nervous in the beginning to be able to do this, this rebuild on this transmission. It's something I've never done before, um, but I did buy the ATSG manual and it helped me out 100% on how to get this done. Plus, I watched some other guys' videos on how to do it also. The next hurdle I have to jump over will be the valve body. Um, but I've done some reading, some more reading through the ATSG. I've watched a couple more videos and it looks like that's going to be pretty straightforward too. But before I get started showing you guys the tools that I've used, I wanted to show you guys a smoking deal that I picked up on Marketplace. I do a lot of shopping on Facebook Marketplace and on Amazon. They're my two main places that I like to go to uh, to buy stuff and I buy a lot of stuff. Um, my wife says I have a tool addiction, but that's all right. Um, uh, she has a shoe addiction. Anyway, I was searching on there. I wanted to get this tool right here. And uh, what this is, this is a depth micro gauge. Uh, you guys saw me use this last night to figure out bolt length on the torque converter flywheel setup or flex plate setup. Um, how this works is this is a zero to four inch set. Uh, I believe last night I said zero to six inch and I was wrong that this is a zero to four inch set. You have different length needles. This is a one inch needle. And then you just adjust it up and down and then you have a fine adjustment here to where you hit the bottom. You wanna make sure you're dead nuts on. Uh, you can twist that and it's like the clutch of a drill basically. Uh, when you hit, when you turn that to a clutch, it'll only spin so fast or I'm sorry, it'll only have so much torque and then it'll it'll back it off. So same principle with this, um, just different concept. Same concept, just different tool. There we go. Um, anyway, uh, he had this listed for $75. Must not have been anybody interested in it. And he had marked down for $40. Um, I met him down the road, told him I wanted it. I'm making, you know, Sunday at five o'clock. He goes, uh, okay, I'm gonna bring some other stuff too. Um, unbeknownst to me, he had a complete zero to six graduated set uh, as far as some micrometers. This is being six inch, this being one inch. He had, like I said, this was a complete uh, graduated set. Uh, the only catch was number two was froze up. I just took it apart a little, I took it apart, get a little clean job and all is well with it. Um, all of them check, check out, all of them are uh, directly on. These are the gauges here to check it and make sure they're on. Um, so I was 100% happy when he had this there also. And then he also had a magnetic base with a uh, zero to 30 thousandths needle gauge on it. Uh, the only thing that this one I don't like about this is this gauge is not changeable. Um, I'm pretty certain I can probably rig something up on there uh, the way it looks. I should be able to take this off, but for the most part, this gauge goes with this magnetic base. Um, I asked him what he wanted for everything. And I told him I had 50 bucks on me. He said sold. So I was able to buy uh, this SPI zero or six. How we start this way? Zero to six uh, graduated set. A zero to four micrometer or depth micrometer, and a uh, thirty thousandths needle gauge with a magnetic base. So I, I bought all this stuff for 50 bucks off of Marketplace. This is all SPI brand. Um, which is a pretty good brand. It's not top level, but it, it's right there in mid-range. So um, I was pretty stoked to be able to pick this set up from him off of Marketplace. Uh, it's just some stuff that he had sitting around he had no use for. He would rather have the cash in his pocket versus having uh, these tools sitting on the shelf collecting dust. So um, the, 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 I just, I couldn't believe I was able to buy all this stuff for 50 bucks. So anyway, let's get to the tools that you will need to do a 47. Probably the most evident thing you're gonna need is a transmission jack. Uh, that is a motorcycle jack that I took a floor jack adapter and I made a plate and I fastened it to my transmission jack. So that's my transmission jack there. You can buy just that piece there and it'll go on top of your floor jack if you so choose. Uh, but I would highly suggest having a proper transmission jack because of how awkward and uneven they are. Um, it just makes it a lot nicer uh, to be able to take that transmission in and out. And then obviously I use my engine hoist. 
Um, I used it, but it is not necessary. Uh, I've used it a couple of times to set the transmission like up on the bench, uh, different places to be able to tear it apart. Um, other than that, we got an assortment of tools right here in front of me that uh, I'm gonna show you here. All right, with the exception of some odds and end wrenches, this is the tools that you're gonna need um, to do the transmission build from uh, removal to rebuild to installation. Um, main thing would be like your torque wrench, your snap ring pliers, uh, a good pick, a nice screwdriver for doing lip seals. Um, first and foremost, manual. Get you a manual, read it. Uh, this is my ATSG manual and that's for 46, 47, and 48 RE transmissions. And this is a lifesaver if you're gonna try this yourself. They do do these in other transmissions as well. It's just not a 46, 47, and 48 RE. It is for, uh, they make them for other makes and models of transmissions also. So first and foremost, make sure and grab yourself a good manual. Uh, read it, uh, reread it, and go over it again just to make sure you know what you're doing and what you're getting into before you uh, tackle this job. Um, make sure you you know you got a good sense of mechanical ability to uh, to take care of this. Uh, there is a lot of specialty tools that you can buy uh, to be able to do this. I made all of mine out of uh, Schedule 40 PVC. Uh, this is the piece that I use to put the. Uh, Overdrive extension housing back together because I use my intermediate shaft instead of using another one of those specialty alignment tools. I know there's a lot of guys out there that have that I've talked to in the field that says that that alignment tool does not fit as well as a standard intermediate shaft. So they've taken intermediate shafts and they've actually cut them and they're using that for their their alignment tool for the overdrive housing. Um, all of these tools, like I said, I've made out of PVC three inch and four inch, and then this is a, a three inch coupler. Um, this one was for the direct hub springs. I used this one to put the uh, snap ring in on the overdrive extension housing for that, that 800 pound spring. And then I've used that as a stand for a couple of different times on, on different things also, uh, putting stuff together. So. Um, I know I had a couple of comments when I was doing the videos. People were worried about the PVC. Uh, trust me, it was in the back of my head the whole time I had my fingers in here um, in that 800 pound spring uh, putting that snap ring back on. But if you guys would actually not really do the math, but if we would do a crush test on this and, and see what the actual crush resistance is on this in a press um, versus that 800 pound spring, I think you would be 100% surprised on the crush value of this vertical cylinder, um, whether it be cut out, whether it be just putting those nine springs in the, the direct hub or, or compressing, you know, that, that 800 pound spring to do things. The, the crush factor on these is probably far greater than what that 800 pound spring is. So um, it was, it was, I was worried, but then again, I knew I was probably fine. Make sure you have a good inch pounds torque wrench and then you'll need a foot pounds torque wrench also. This is a quarter inch inch pounds torque wrench from Olsa Tools. Uh, this torque wrench is available in half, three eighths, and quarter inch drive. These are available on Amazon through Olsa Tools' store. If you guys wanna check those out, I'll put a link in the description. Um, these are a very, very nice torque wrench for minimal money. I think I paid uh, $96 for this one. The three eighths is $119. And as far as the half inch, I'm not 100% certain on that one because I have their digital half inch and that one's $289. So um, taking things apart, you'll need two different pairs of snap rings, pliers. Um, these are the two pairs that I have. Um, these take This one would be like for taking your extension housing apart. There's a big snap ring in there that you gotta spread the fingers apart to let it drop out of. Um, screwdriver for wiping or for rimming around lip seals. You need a pick for pulling out seals and also for pulling out clutches. And then also a, a digital mic. Um, you guys saw me use that depth gauge last night. Uh, I could actually use this also, putting this needle just like that and going down until it touches and then reading it right there and that'll give me the dimensions that I need also. It's just I had just purchased that did that depth micrometer so I wanted to give it a try and see how it worked. Uh, when you're putting things back together you're going to be needing that, you're going to be needing your snap ring pliers, you're going to be needing your torque wrench 
And then like for input shaft end play, uh, I used a magnetic base with a needle gauge on the end and I had it sitting right on top of the input shaft and then I just brought the input shaft up and down to tell me what the uh, end play was and we were all good. There is another tool that you can also purchase. This is an H gauge. Uh, what this does is it sits down on top of your casting and you drop this needle down right here on top of it and then you take and turn it over on top of your pump and that'll tell you what your input shaft end plate is. Um, I already had everything together so we just did it with the uh, magnetic base with the needle gauge on it. One of the other things that I found really handy was a couple of trays like this. Um, this is the only one I still have out because I still have some uh, miscellaneous nuts and bolts in it. Uh, to hold everything, it is nice to have a tray like this um, to be able to put some of your miscellaneous nuts and bolts in and, and hold that stuff for you. You can get some Tupperware, that way you can put lids on it and if something gets knocked down or knocked over, uh, everything stays separated and organized. If you wanted to do that, this is just another thing that I found real handy for myself is having this uh, tray to be able to put a lot of nuts and bolts different kinds of stuff that I wanted to keep separated out in. I think that pretty much covers it. I'm not certain on anything else that you may need. Um, I'm sure there is other things. I'm just forgetting them other than, you know, some odds and end wrenches, um, ratchets, whatever that you want to use um, as far as taking things apart, uh, the different, the pan bolts and stuff like that. Uh, I use my impact, my Milwaukee impact on a lot of that stuff, or my Milwaukee M12, M12 ratchet and impact on pretty much the teardown. It, it was really relatively simple. Another thing that if you don't have it, you might want to pick up is a slide hammer um, to be able to take your pump out. Or if you have your pan and your bow body out, you can pry in between the uh, the sun shell and the direct gear. I'm sorry. Yeah, this you can pry on the sun shell and everything it'll actually pry the pump out so um that, that's one way you can do it or have the slide hammer and pull up on it and that'll pull that pump out of the casting too so um that pretty much covers everything that i wanted to go over tonight i just wanted to show you guys some miscellaneous tools that i use for a 47 re rebuild um it, it's it worked out really well for me with the things that i had you don't need a lot of different tools um, you just have to have a little bit of ingenuity on how to make some of the specialty tools that you're going to need to be able to do the build. So other than that, guys, I think that's pretty much all I have. If you guys don't mind, hit that like button, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not already done so, and we'll talk to you guys later on.